six year old gentleman who had an anterior wall MI before uh, two years. He had a history of CVA before 15 years, presented with unstable angina, moderate LV dysfunction, oh, yes. angiogram, LED, total, it is actually, you feel it is not total, but you will see it is total, and uh, major OM, 80, 85, RCA, around 70, 80, syntax score 13. We will be evaluating the LED lesion and trying to fix it first and then we will see what to do further and if need be in the sake of the time if we are delayed then we will uh, you know do uh, half the part of it off live because we don't want to delay you know uh, even the discussion part over there. So this is the uh, right which is filling up LED completely up to proximal segment and uh, uh, next view just go <coughs> next view yeah yeah you can see yes. this is a di you know healed dissection intraarterial collaterals and what not absolutely yeah these uh -huh. are probably functional cto as we call it in you Oh no, no, I just want to take it. So, Dr. Tejas, I just want you to explain that you, how you are hooking I, uh, yeah. you. Yeah, this I tell you, I tried, you know, I tried with uh, going in, this is in descending aorta, so I will go in the ascending aorta. If it is unfolded, then I will, I, uh, if it is folded, then I will show you how we unfold it. Go to LAO. Yeah, okay, come to AP. Come to AP. No, no. Huh? Okay, this is unfolded. Keep it unfolded. Or folded. So I will now unfold it. And I use the opposite stiff end of the wire very carefully, not allowing it to protrude outside. So, what's your recommendation regarding going to for going to LV in a folded EBU and come out and straighten it? Pardon? So, going to LV in a with a folded, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. This can also work many times, and we accordingly do. But if it doesn't work many times, or when there is severe left ventricular hypertrophy, or if we suspect clot or something, yeah. we don't like to push it in. Yeah, I think this technique is by far the safest it's way. The safest yeah. one, yeah. yeah. The short arch, uh, I mean, the short ascending is the worst. Maximum, maximum, maximum. The most difficult. Yeah. Just see apicordal ma joil or the coaxiality barabar zin. Apicordal. Apicordal. I always love to confirm the coaxiality. Yeah, hmm. this is maximum okay. Now, do maximum magnification. Okay. I want LED. the LED to be, lesion to be evaluated in maximum mag. This is a seven French, right? No, six French. Six French, okay. Hmm. Look at this. Yes. Corkscrew. This <laughs> is yeah, a, yeah, corkscrew, corkscrew. This is a, a difficult wiring uh, expedition. So, what is the choice of wire? Go to AP cranial. I think hydrophilic, uh, you know, wire of your choice. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I what will you use? Arocranial. Uh, Arocranial. What do you think about Sion black wires? Yeah. Which one? Sion black. Sion black is, is what Aviram says would use. Oh. You know, I typically like... I think I will first try with run through only. Mm. Run through only. Let wow. me see. Yeah. Okay. Why not Pilot 50? Pilot 50 is the next choice. Run through. If it doesn't enter, I will use a balloon. 90% it will go in. If it still doesn't go, then we will see. I think it should go because we can see some anti-grade flow. But you see right which is filling up LED. Yes. So mm -hmm. at some point of time, it is a solid total occlusion. Mm. Yes. And there is column effect also. And there is a column effect. You can yeah. see there. So, again, we should not underestimate. Maybe 
મેગ્નિફિકેશન ઘટાડી નાખજે સોલ પર્પઝ ઓફ કીપિંગ ધીસ કેસ વોઝ આઈ વોન્ટ ટુ ડાયલેટ એન્ડ શો હાઉ ધ ઓસીટી એન્ડ આઈ વોઝ લુક what kind of tip did you give to the wire they just can you yeah share? that let, let let sanjay explain sanjay just is like a wire a, man just like a cto curve cto curve very oh. short very short primary curve okay and then do you and give a secondary curve yes also? yes secondary curve and also. see uh, movement should be very fast back and forth wherever you find you know a sort of a resistance come back and go again and when you know there is a, you know at the tip if it is buckling only on one side constantly means there are high chances that you are going subintimal balloon. give me 2 mm 2 uh, mm balloon 2 so by there, 15 is there yeah. any flow after wiring so pardon is there any flow after wiring the, we will check yes. it okay. we will check it no it has reduced so yeah. what's your prediction regarding uh, diagonal in this case also Uh, it may or may not occlude i am not going to touch it <laughs> <laughs> prediction and you know see i tell you why i have a reason sir it has a good great not good great ischemic preconditioning yes so this diagonal is not going to bother me okay. i am focusing on the main area and i will do that way it is filled up by uh, collateral solar yeah that's why it is a lot of ischemic preconditioning and uh, dr tejas this cork screw type uh, lesion in the proximal led what do yeah. you feel like it's a heel dissection i tell you that now nah, yeah good question one thing is heel dissection and second thing is Thomas. multiple intraarterial collaterals that's a recanalized yeah. thrombus and when if it is multiple intraarterial collaterals you will see a complete honeycomb appearance on oct we will see that's typical of uh, recanalized thrombus ah uh, is it a case yeah. of old anterior wall mi ah uh, yeah before 2 years okay yeah. uh, which was medically managed at that point of time okay. in the periphery uh, one thing regarding the diagonal one thing if any another diagonal after that bigger diagonal is there you can leave that diagonal is that dictum is uh, useful or not there no be another diagonal after this uh, big diagonal ajay's uh, led is very big <laughs> so uh, dr tejas we want you to you know guide our Order? fellows that uh, you know if they encounter this kind of case with such yeah. a large diagonal see that what is they what do Now that is what, see i tell you the good question you know that is where you know at times i differ in opinion from many uh, experienced interventionalists i personally feel that if you are aiming to improve 80% focus on making that 80% perfect rather than fiddling around everywhere yeah whenever it is needed you always do secondly we are very confident like if there is a big artery and if something happens we can re, you know rewire it because we have sizable experience doing that but otherwise also like two wires getting intermingled inside and not able to pass the balloon and all those things it will create lot of problems so we dilated with the nca nc emerge 2 by 12 15 and now i will be doing uh, oct and then i was so crossing of the balloon was easy yeah it was little bit of jack hammering at one spot i think there was only one spot which was pretty hard and rest of them was all sort of fimbria type of thing that is what i feel and let us see i think we will get some good image 
Okay. Yeah, I think so. And that's the reason why I kept this case. First case, I never anticipated this complexity. In this master class, I have not kept very difficult cases like regular trichos. Because in that case, you know, our focus also while do, as an operator will be on the case rather than imaging and physiology. And even, you know, the audience also will be dragged towards the technicality. So, we will be keeping relatively simple cases and we will discuss uh, everything throughout. Okay, hmm, scout. Sanjay, you hmm. tell them uh, how, huh? Thodu Thodu jau. Under, huh? how are you going to inject in this case? See, injection technique, you know, is very typical which Sanjay is doing. Huh? Out, Go to AP Caudal. Let me selectively direct my tip towards a lady. Scout, wait, now, wait, okay. wait, I now, okay, now take it. Uh, Is it okay, Professor? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, I have to give very early because… Yeah, he very will give, feeling. yeah, very, very yeah. late feeling. Yeah. So, he will give very early injection. <laughs> okay, Sine, you are doing a, a, a NGO co-registration, no problem, go ahead. Sine, you tell me. So here you can use manual injection also, so that you start injecting and when it is That's getting second. cleared, they can enable the pullback. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Once you start injecting. Yeah, he has already injected. See, very early. No, there's no clearance. It is but moving very, very late. late movement, but very, late. very late. So we nothing. Huh? We need to, we need to dilate yes. further. Yes. It's not getting cleared. No problem. I thought, uh, Delayed injection. Still more delayed injection. So, ACR kaadi na kama. Just remove ACR. So, we'll do on fluoro. No problem. Okay. Okay. See, these are, uh, go ahead. Auto calibrate. Okay. Inject. I think problem here is of not getting cleared, artery mm. is not getting cleared. Yeah, I think we have to dial it. And so, uh, in this condition also we can get image, but in for that we have to use side port, uh, you know, simultaneously and do yeah, a manual it is, uh, But that's not a great uh, idea, in fact. Yeah. We will quickly dial it with 2.5 NC track, get me, 2.5 by 15 NC track, quick. So here what we do is we uh, simultaneously inject with the side port and the side port because the vessel is occluded. But this surprised me yeah. and then now it makes me think that lesion character is much more complex than what we think. And uh, they just been such diagonal would you like to take the help of physiology after stenting? Yeah, physiology is always, you know, your friend when you don't want to do anything <laughs> with the lesion. Yeah, it's a good idea. But putting my bet on pathophysiology and physiology, although physiology is in the guideline as class 1, I put my bet on a personal level on a pathophysiology and tissue character. Sir, could you please elaborate on the uh, side port injection? Pardon? The side port, the side port injection. Mm -hmm. So, what they do is uh, like uh, in this kind of artery when we are not getting uh, appropriate clearance of the artery for uh, you know OCT run. Here you can start with the side port run. Your distal vessel is not getting cleared. You will start seeing the distal Scout. vessel. Then you start simultaneous Little side more. port and main injection and take a pullback. Okay. And around 50 or 60 percent of time you can get a you know. Uh, OCT run in this kind of condition. Ten. Reflect. Go. Fifteen. Koli guard barabar. Okay. Deflate. Now we will be able to see something. Scout. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. 
scout. I think this proximal region need, needs to be dilated. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Six, eight, ten. Yeah. I think that was the culprit. Mm. Probably that was, probably that was a flap which was disallowing the clearance. Let me check it now. Sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. Looks now good. Chalo. Good. Law. In previous LED, the IOS is very handy because with IOS, you can see that, uh, you know, flow is there or not. Uh, with the IOS pullback, because if you are seeing the speckling, that means that some amount of uh, flow, you can predict that this artery is flowing or not, even without giving contrast to the artery. I think we should get now good run with those. I think uh, there, uh, now there is no issue, absolutely. Okay, scout, scout. Let it be coaxial towards the LED. Okay, go in. Okay. 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 Scout, okay. scout, scout. Little bit. Wire, wire. Okay. Barabar se? Hmm. Chalo, hmm. go. Can, can we push further to look for the diagonal? No, 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 no problem. Well. No problem. I am pushing it further. Okay. Chalo. Let's, let's do it now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Can we enlarge the OCT image, please? Yeah. Let us, we have just taken the yes, run. Sorry. Very clear image. It's a clean image. Clean. So I am removing it. Can you see the OCT? Yes, we can see it on the okay. bigger screen now. Yeah, it's a distal portion, right? Got it, yeah. Okay. Here might be uh, the diagonal, right? This might be the diagonal. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah. And then... Yeah. This is a dilated portion. You can identify the dissection. Mm. Yeah. So, Dr. Akasaki, is this mostly fibrotic, you think? Uh, I don't think so. Here might be uh, some intraplural hemorrhage. Heme uh, yeah, hematoma, yeah, yeah. healed yeah. plaque, partly, yeah. Yes. TCFA. So, so here much is different CX, than yes, what yes. I thought, actually. Yeah? It's giving impression of uh, healed, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. healed yeah. dissection. Yeah. Healed dissection. Or yes. healed, uh, healed dissection. Yeah. Dissection yeah. or ruptured yeah. plaque with residual intramural, intraplaque, you know, okay. hemorrhage. Yes, I agree. Yes, this is a, the, the CX, right? This might yeah, be proximal the, the, landing yeah. is good, yeah. Professor, huh? Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, just the proximal LED, right? Yeah. The diameter is uh, 3.23, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. And then, yeah. Yeah, this might be, uh, uh, as you said, here, here is dissection, right? Some, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Space there, right? And then, again, here is, uh, right, uh, you, you can identify some dissection, and then comes, here is a, a diagonal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, Diagonal origin is not all that bad. No, no. <laughs> and here is a distal landing zone. Might be yeah, a little bit distal to the diagonal, but uh, it's a healthy landing. Yeah, yeah. long uh, limited flow that might be makes a small uh, uh, shrinkage of the, the, the vessel, right? So this is a very wonderful place to select the, uh, the landing zone, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe. Okay. The MRA is 1.6, the diameter is 1.5, but I think this might be the shrinkage portion, so we have I to I think so. The, yes. The tone has gone. Yeah. The artery stone is not good. Try to measure the, the EL to EL in this case. 2.6, right? Right, E to EL is 2.8, so... 
at least uh, we can select 2.5, right? Yes. yes. So yes. And proximal is uh, 3.2. Uh, two. Three. Three point so, so we can take 2.75, yeah. low pressure, and come back and give a high yes, pressure. Yes, yes. I think. And mm -hmm. one, let us do IVAS. So let us check the, with the IVAS. What is the length, length of the lesion? Length should be uh, from Just here. Not the IVAS. Hmm. To here. Right. <coughs> 20. First session, Sava Gear Sudhishan, a Joy Lender. Yeah. Ring should be a 20 millimeter, right? Okay. Dr. Akasagar, do you think that the lesion needs to be more, uh, needs to be prepared more or it's good okay. as far as OCT is concerned? Yeah, I think it's okay because there are no. Uh, uh, calcium right only a very right. soft so tissue right so we can dilate so this is another advantage of imaging that after doing a, you know modification of the plaque you yeah, can yes, actually yes. check okay yes. your plaque is Arala. adequately modified or not and you can place your stand and you okay. can yeah. get a adequate set, set MSS. that's right okay, and and this uh, portion, okay. Uh, because of the low we can start storage, the vessel is uh, uh, shrinkage right yeah. okay now Professor, okay, okay. Uh, we yeah, interpret the yeah, so <laughs> US okay. image. This, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Can we see the IOS image, please? Yeah, yeah, just show the IOS image. Yeah. yeah. Is it seen? Yeah, it's seen now. Yeah, this is a distal wow. portion, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think sideboard needs to be purged here, yeah. maybe. Not this looks good now. Looks yeah, normal. Yes. Is it seen well there? Yeah, it's seen well. Okay. Sir. Some, some. Yes. Uh, fibrosis. Fibrosis. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Fibrosis. But yes. But size is good here. It's around three. Yes. Yes. That's right. Around three. Right. So this speckling shows us that yeah, even branch. without the that injection, that its artery is flowing. That the speckling inside yeah. that only, is there. Only a small calcium here. Calcium right. in the peripheral part. No. Yeah. But it's largely fibro seems to be yeah. fibrotic. Yeah. That's right. Yes, mainly a fibrous. Yeah. Yes, and some yes, uh, uh, yes, some layered portion, right? Maybe a hero dissection, right? Born. Ah, bas ma dono. Here is the CX. Okay. And left main, right? Yeah. And guiding, right? So, what was the length, professor? Length is 20 by OCT. 20. 20. Yeah. So we take 23 then. 23, okay. Or eight, okay. 18 will be short, I think. Mm. A little bit short. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, do you think, you think it, lo it looks better by imaging than what you anticipated? Mm. I think so. I thought that it will be a very complex, you know, area with lot of honeycomb type of appearance. But no, it was a clear cut hill dissection. It was a hill dissection. Excellent. Now, I think that's the point is that, you know, sometimes imaging makes your work more because it's more Two, complex than yeah, you that's realize. Right. Huh? Other times it makes it easier. Uh, 2.75 by 24, get me uh, uh, synergy, get me synergy. Mm. Dr. Akasaka, yes. could we get any additional information by doing the IVAS which was not there? Uh, Epicranial. Diagonal, yes. Here might be the, the diagonal. I'm afraid. Wait a moment. Yes. So, uh, nitro, nitro. spasm check. Give nitro. Give nitro. See, uh, somehow I have a feeling that chronically occluded lesion, the distal vessel looks small, even if it is well collateralized, probably the tone of the artery is much less in the distal area. So, let us see by doing this. Wait, 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 mm. wait, wait, wait. Let me check it first. Ah. So, we so have prepared it, it with 2.5 balloon. Chum. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks better. better. It looks definitely better. Uh, what do you think about this diagonal? Will it occlude or will it not occlude? <laughs> I think nah. we should rest on your, you know, experience. Areocranial, 
there are 50 50 percent chances it may occlude it may not occlude and i am on the other side of 50 it should not occlude and for this side of 50 will you wear this again <laughs> let us see okay this looks bridge. bigger and there is a bridge in the middle okay. lady is the diagonal disease at the origin uh, yeah. like in the last case it was non disease segment but the here that's right it's a disease segment and still you feel see that it this is guide catheter is 2 millimeter uh, so it is not more than 2 but it's okay i don't want to fiddle around it should not occlude the angle is good if the angle is th th you know, less than 45 or less than 30 there are very high chances here the angle of lad and diagonal is pretty uh, significant it is around more than 60 percent so even if it is diseased on the whole it should not let us see dr tejas as uh, you have already decided not to intervene the diagonal will you like to go ahead for the functional assessment uh, which is going to be in your favor not to go ahead for the diagonal yeah but uh, you know uh, doing it or not doing it Rajesh, I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> Moreover, he's using, you know, the preconditioning of the myocardium. Yeah. Even, even if it, it, That's it right. is cut off, nothing will happen to the patient. Mm. That is Come what back actually is Epicordal. Epicordal. And say, I am going to show you something after doing this. I will be maneuvering. Go, scout. Little, uh -huh. Go. Looks good. Little Inject. More, little more. So it's 23. Okay. Yeah. You have taken 23? 20, 24. Yes, this is fine. Go. 24. It is a synergy. Synergy with a specific reason I have taken here to, to save the diagonal. So 2.75. 2.75. 24. 12. 12. 12 is good enough. Deflate. Uh, uh, go to now go to epicranial now you guys just see what we do uh, i will go in go at three atmosphere only three four so three four up to six atmosphere principle of balloonomics the balloon conforms to the artery size so i am not worried about any injury come down this is the actual size of the artery go three four Record and deflate. Go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go. Three, four. Dr. Tejas, can you explain what are you doing here? The result will be self-explanatory. Yeah, I am just trying to reduce the, you know, uh, uh, making the tone of the artery proper. So we want uh, our fellows to know that. Uh, yeah, that is what I am doing. I, I was coming to the point. But, uh, you know, the, this is what we have learnt out of our experience. Most of the time, the artery starts looking pretty good. Look at this. Do you find the difference? Yeah, here also the, we have got a good myocardial bridge. And see, what about uh, the diagonal? Your experience, again, you know, 50% that you... 50%, yes. good. Go to AP caudal. Now, rather than doing any post dilatation, I will do... OCT imaging and see and then if need be only I will be touching that area. So we want you to demonstrate that uh, myocardial bridge also on IWAS. Okay. Uh, yes, we, we okay. Can see the that gives us a very yeah, you know, yeah. beautiful images. Yes. Uh, the, by by IWAS we can identify the bridge. Yeah. In the distal portion. So we do one OCT quickly and one IWAS quickly. No problem. We have still 15 yeah. minutes. No, don't worry. IWAS. 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 Yes. Okay. Can you see the IBUS? Uh, yeah. I was bridge, Dr. Akasaka is showing in this only. Here is in the bridge portion, right? Okay. Could you stop? So in my experience, the volcano IBUS shows bridging much better. Again, for the reasons we were talking about earlier, it has no. greater penetration. And yes, for that yes. purpose, it's much better. Yeah. In fact, uh, Dr. Rajesh has got a publication also yeah. on, uh, you know, identification Dynamic, of uh, yes. myocardial bridge on here, IWAS. Here it, you it, can it gives us beautiful images. Here you can identify the bridge, right? Yeah. 
during six or a yes the akasha ka this yes. classical half moon image uh, yes. i yes. think i repeat uh, i was with a good bird across uh, yes. is going to demonstrate yeah it's a yeah, very classical yeah. sign of yes. uh, my god yeah. bridge we will I do it no problem no and, problem and that akasha ka kindly also demonstrate uh, how it uh, looks like uh, okay in the oct okay. image ap cranial uh, oct uh, yeah wait a moment <laughs> Yeah. I think it's too fast for OCT to identify that. Yeah, yeah. by OCT sometimes difficult to identify yeah. the, uh, the bridge. Marvelous. But, uh, But we can identify the, the moon-like uh, appearance sometimes. It's okay, ne? Chalo, let us inject and see. Ha! Hmm. Ah. I hope our participants are having good time, ha? Huh? Just see. i can tell you the expansion both side is 90% plus in this case as per the oct we will not have to do anything i think so can you see oct yes here so is uh, the distal uh, edge yes i try to show 112 expansion 40 yeah why that is 49 because the it is now calculating left main area and that is misinterpreted there you can identify the position here the uh, just only a proximal site yeah that's right yeah, yeah. Here we is will incomplete opposite so 3 mm yeah. yes i can try to check uh, 3.39 might be so 3.5 at a low pressure yes. 3.5 by 8 get me uh, 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 nc track and then we will take one ivas run and and finish this session okay dr akasha ka can you enlighten us by you, uh, that how when to use uh, you know dio lumen uh, for uh, checking the expansion and want to when to use tapering method for uh, expansion yes here you can identify uh, we divide the two two portion right uh, in this view uh, right so uh, here is the proximal site and here is the distal site when you try to use this one uh, it might be better to uh, put uh, this portion to the, uh, uh, the uh, just before the bifurcation right so in this portion uh, the proximal site looks uh, expansion is 50% and uh, this portion the difference is here so uh, i'm not sure it is okay or not we cannot identify any branch, branch in this case right so what is the proximal or ostral led uh, you know msa, MSA it's around msa eight. is here right 8 around 7 scout i think mra is 3.39 in the, the just proximal portion because i already Go. explained Ten. you this portion right Ten. yes okay So I recommended the three five. Ten. So can you check the expansion using the tapering method? Tapering method. Yes. Yes. So that we'll come to know that what is the difference that okay. we get okay. uh, while okay. using check the element. A simple tapering is. Yeah, tapering will be seventy five to eighty. Beautiful. Hmm. The change is the, the, the yes. Get low, you. expansion yes all right i was sure yeah this is an tapering method right so the 62 portion is 62 so we have to dilate here a little bit more so the <coughs> so the proximal part of the stand proximal half needs to be dilated yeah, we have already dilated and now we will be taking the i was run when i was run with two purposes just to show uh, you know the bridge and then this thing proximal area what Go is the ap cordal what is take home for the bridge at uh, landing john near the stands ap so cranial whether, whether you cover partially or completely or just always try to leave that bridge part bridge uh, should be avoided ha huh? it should be avoided by and large but sometime it, uh, it is a one or 2 mm here and there so it is then, very then cover it then cover it and accept little high risk stenosis what else <laughs> yeah. 
so just for the audience okay. can Parabar we si you know, can we elaborate on the tapering method Parabar measurement that okay. we just did dr akasaka or okay. you know ankush either one chalo now we start with ivas recording started yes sorry professor to yes. trouble you from here okay. to there right so this is a distal part right yeah okay is some uh, fibrous prop because of the the raw shear stress means uh, uh, some change right okay <coughs> yeah it's still still distal portion right Mm, bridge. Yeah, this is a bridge. This is the bridge. Right. <laughs> Are you able to see there properly? Yes, yes very well seen. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Go. Okay. Proximal. Proximal site. Still some bridge you can identify, yeah. right? Is it moving? Right. Uh, slowly. Still, let's see. Yes, coming bigger, right? That Akasaka kindly saw this uh, bridge in the O city as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it will be too right. much. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, distal edge. Uh, there are no dissection, and uh, yes, and the expansion is okay. I think it needs to be slightly more, uh, you know, can I hear maybe the, the diagonal yes. branch? Yes. And then? Flush. Flush. So, but there are few case reports that have shown that with the myocardial bridge, you can get a beading kind of, uh, you know, luminogram with OCT. But that's not always seen. There's a lot of… Yeah. A uh, big plaque. A really big plaque. Positive remodeling. Positive here, right? remodeling, yes. It looks good, no? Beautiful. Right. So, so the proximal site and the position should be okay by IBUS. So, right. Dr. Akasaka, in that area of large plaque, would you recommend further expansion? Um, uh, a little bit, if you want, but uh, we have to pay attention to the distal site, right? We can dilate this portion. Yes. So, so if the if the MSA is proper, would you leave it be? Fine. Yeah. Uh, Go to RA or cranial. Yeah, and diameter is three point two three. So uh, generally speaking, the room and diameter is okay. I would say in this case with the CTO situation, it's a reasonable result. Cordial. I think. You know. So what do you guys think about the result? It looks good. I think it does. I think the point I was trying to make is that as long as the MSA is good, the plaque behind the stand doesn't have to be squeezed out. And what, what do you think about this uh, uh, OM? I think th here you can use FFR yes. which will be 0 0.9. Yes, exactly. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you don't want, want to do it. <laughs> You, you want me to use it or it is 11.15? I think I can already feel the point 0.9. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so, uh, what's the FFR for the mid-RCA? I think that's yeah, that, to be uh, that will be, to start with, it will be point 0.85 and with adenosine, it will be point 0.8182. <laughs> In this lab, you know, the adenosine dose is also a little weird. And that dose has been designed by Dr. Sanjay Shah. For right, we are giving 300, uh, you know, mics. And for left, we are giving 600, It is three times more than, you know, the dose which has been recommended intracoronary. Okay. Dr. Prasad, any comments on physiology? That yeah, we are going to hear him tomorrow. <laughs> we seem to have non-believers here, so I, I guess my presentation will be helpful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, but somehow, uh, artery over here, I want to know from Rajesh, Ankush and others and, you know, 
here we see lot of negative ffrs despite the lesion severity of 80% or 75% or more uh, even in lad are you guys encountering this problem in your centers uh, not with 80% lesions, that's surprising. I mean, we'll talk about that a little bit, about pitfalls of measuring it. But uh, not, as a matter of routine, I wouldn't have thought, particularly in younger patients, you should get. But somehow I feel, Abhiram, that, you know, the arteries most of the time are extremely negatively remodeled artery. And we are working on a particular segment. And there is a lot of, uh, you know, sort of uh, in, uh, small vessel disease and a lot of other issues. Right. So if you can't get hyperemia because you have diffused narrowing yes. of a vessel, even though there's no plaque to be seen, that will affect the yeah. FFR. So that seems to be the culprit in uh, the, the interpretation of FFR with us in this part of the world. Because every alternate person is a diabetic and every third person is a diabetic of more than 10 years duration who are coming on the table. So these are the issues which we face. Yeah. Uh, so here we will be going off the live and for, there will be a, a coffee break for 10 minutes and I request all the participants to come back on time because you must hear Abhiram, he is an eloquent speaker followed by Samir. At least if you guys go for coffee during my talk, it is fine, there is no problem. <laughs> but <laughs> come on time just to listen to these two great speakers. So uh, I really uh, thank everybody for the first session and I am sure that uh, there was, uh, you know, good education and good discussion, you know, on, uh, on, on the topic. Uh, th any question if you guys have, you know, we can speak for two minutes. I think it was a great demonstration of difficult cases and how to handle and also limitations of imaging. You know, just because it's good doesn't mean you can do it every single time. And you have to accept that fact. So, great, One great question. cases. Thank you. Sorry, Thank just a question, sir, please. Shall I ask? Ah. Please go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Uh -huh. So, actually, uh, well, it energy. is a really a rarity to see myocardial bridging uh, along with the lesion. See, same case I have got. The patient has got a lesion just beyond the myocardial bridge. He has got a positive TMT, angina. The problem is where to put the stent. Because if I put it will naturally, it will mm -hmm. go on, go to the distal part of the myocardial bridge. So, the, my idea is, what is the role of doing a dub in such a condition? I think wherever we are seeing myocardial bridge, it's always advisable to avoid a stent, yeah. number one. Number two, uh, it's a great idea to use, uh, you know, De if you are pushed against the wall and you have to intervene, I think uh, deb, uh, you know, uh, doing some, you know, pre-dilatation and putting them, want, it's yeah. coming a great way. But and I, I also believe it's a great option, even if we have to intervene. Because putting a stent in a myocardial bridge, we know that either we'll have a stent fracture, a acute uh, stent failure, or later we can have a ISR. So wherever possible, just avoid it. And if you have a deb is a great option, uh, if we have to intervene, that's yeah, it. Thank you. Fly through. Just a moment, the last, you know, another half a minute, uh, you know, for all those uh, who are new to OCT, this fly-through image, you know, doesn't help us much as far as, you know, any decision-making is concerned. But showing the relatives of the patient, I think this is the most impressive image. Go ahead. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> Yeah, this is a 3D reconstruction of the stent, yeah. One more thing, Dr. Tejas here, I would like to uh, comment uh, for the fellows that at 40, we are seeing a, you know, malapposition, a bit of malapposition. Mm. So it has not been shown to be, you know, related to any adverse outcome. Yes. But, 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 but proximal LED, malapposed stent, whenever you have to go next time in, yes. you know, it will cause problems. Yes. So that is why uh, it needs to be fixed during index uh, procedure. But uh, yeah, we have already fixed this. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah we know this that. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we, we, we disperse for the break for 10 minutes. Good. <laughs>